It's Travis Michael. Today's video, we're working on this York rooftop unit here. It's a 15 ton unit. We're gonna be doing a leak check and repair on it. Let's get into it. So in today's video, I'm gonna give you guys some tips on how to locate a leak that is not an obvious leak. You know, it's, a lot of times systems are flat out of refrigerant. It's a pretty big leak, you know, whether it's a cracked pipe or a rub out somewhere. Normally, you put some nitrogen in it, you can hear it. Uh, this is not the case with this particular system. I put some nitrogen in it, uh, you know, just did some listening around. Check the evap coil area, moved some stuff around. I couldn't, I couldn't hear nothing. So I said, all right, let me dig into this a little more. I started looking for signs of a leak. You know, sometimes you get oil, um, especially on the high side, you could, you, you might be more prominent. Uh, but you know, there wasn't much to be seen here uh, without removing any panels. So I figured a good place to start would be out here in the condenser section. Um, generally, I like to start where wherever is most accessible, just because once you start going crazy taking stuff apart you got to put it back together regardless that's where the leak is and if the leak's not there you still got to find it so I took the panel off here for our coil now this particular system has two compressor circuits um, circuit one has dehumidification capability so there's a reheat valve and a, a hot gas reheat coil uh, next to the evaporator you know, so that's the one that's flat this one we're working on the other systems working the other circuits working okay uh, I got the whole machine down right now, this way I can work on it. So I want to go over a few things that I, I came across here that helped me determine where the leak was and just a few signs of, of things you can look for. Once I pulled this panel off, I could see some areas on the piping where you can see it looks like almost like pollen and dirt. It's basically stuck on the pipe and it, it's on there pretty good. Generally, in my experience, that means that there's a small leak here and it's not leaking that much oil from the system. It's just enough that it's going down the piping and some stuff that's floating around in the air is getting stuck on it. And when it gets stuck on there, it's almost like a glue. And it, you know, But that's a good sign of you're in the right direction. If you see something like this all over the piping in, in, in the area, you see up here, I, I sprayed this with some soap bubbles. But once you get up top, higher, you know, there's nothing on the pipe. It's just, just, you know, just a little bit. It's nothing really stuck on there the way this is you know over here this is the other circuit that's not leaking you can see it's nice and clean and it, you know it's, there's nothing on there that shows me any signs of a leak so I figured this would be a good area to start I ended up just spraying the uh, entire entire coil all the u-bends I started from the top down sprayed all the u-bends and then I started working from from this way just any fitting I could find and I was just spraying it and once I hit this one here, which is right in that vicinity where all that stuff I'm talking about on uh, piping is, I could actually hear it once I got the soap bubbles on there. It's uh, it's not a large enough leak to really hear without any soap bubbles, but you can see that right there. It's right on the bottom of that fit in there. Now that we got the leaks fixed, I pumped it up almost 300 psi of nitrogen. Uh, so it bubbled everything that I worked on and we're uh, we're in good shape now. There's no more leaks present. I checked the filter dryer as well. All the connections over there were good there. Uh, just going to show you guys real quick. It looks like this coil has been repaired before in the same spot just on the other side. You see where I fixed my joints and only the one was leaking but I figured it, you know, it must be a weak spot that they've had problems in it, so I coated that one up a little more with some braze. But over here, definitely does not look like a factory joint. You can see it kind of mounded up, almost similar to what I did over here, and you know, I, I built it up with some braze. So it looks like somebody's been in here before. Um, as far as I know, we've never leak checked this unit or made any repairs on that. So in the time that we've been in this building, they did have a contractor, uh, a different contractor in here previously. So it's possible they took care of that and then also up here it looks like that's what the factory joints would look like much more smoother we're here you know just doing it in the field and and I'm sure the same mindset I had let's build it up a little bit of extra braze give us some more strength now I always like to change the liquid line filter dryers when I'm doing any type of leak repair anytime I open a system up whether it's compressor change or you know, whatever it may be if I'm taking the refrigerant out I, I like to, to put a new liquid line dryer and it's actually general good practice I'm sure if anybody who went to school I'm sure the instructors you know really hammered you over the head on that but I, I can't tell you how many times I've seen it 
like I said, it looks like this system was repaired before in that same spot on the other side of the coil. And that liquid line dry I took out was from the factory. I know because it still had the paint that they put over the fittings. Um, basically, they, they, I don't know if they spray it or brush it, but they go over the fitting where the liquid line dryer connects to the piping. You know, I'm not exactly sure their methodology behind that. Um, maybe it's for something with warranty. They can prove they didn't change the liquid line dryer if it's painted out or whatever. But uh, so I know this system's been opened up before to make a leak repair, and that dryer wasn't changed. Now, is there always going to be an issue? Eh, possibly not. But this system was sitting with no refrigerant in it. Uh, that's definitely when you want to change it, especially on a 410A system. They say uh, you know 410A is super critical to be changing liquid line dryers anytime you're opening it because you know the PoE oil is hygroscopic, which means that it basically just sucks up moisture. You know, so if it's open to the atmosphere and you get a, a humid day, it's just going to be absorbing that moisture. And you want to get that moisture out of the system for the system to operate properly. So general good practice, I always change my filter dryers with a new one anytime I'm opening a system up. Because I, I have seen it before where I've actually, you know, for whatever the circumstance was, the dryer didn't get changed. And we run the system and it's actually, there's an issue with the dryer as well. You know, when I had like a 30 degree temperature drop across it and I was having nothing but problems so it eliminates you a lot of headache in the long run just make sure you change that dryer out on this system we have two circuits so when you're gonna remove a filter dryer you want to make sure you know which one it is make sure it corresponds to the circuit you're working on a lot of systems are labeled uh, I don't see any labeling on this one but as you can see this has uh, this T here is for the hot gas bypass system so basically when it's bypassing the hot gas to the reheat coil, this is our new liquid line that comes back and then it goes through the filter dryer. So so we know circuit one is the only one with dehumidification, so this is definitely our filter dryer that we're working on. So I'm going to remove this and we're going to install a new one. I've let all the nitrogen out of the circuit and I, wrapped, I like to wrap the expansion valve with a wet rag. You know, keep it uh, keep it from overheating when we're unsweating this. Let's get started. So this is my nitrogen purge system. It's always a good idea to flow some nitrogen through the pipes anytime you're brazing. It reduces uh, any scale buildup from the heating process of the brazing. I also like to use a little heat paste on the filter dryer. It helps prevent the overheating of the dryer and burning of the paint.
here I was using a fitting reducer to go from 5 8 pipe connection to half inch pipe. I was having some issues when I was tapping the pipe in. It, the fitting reducer just kept on going further into the filter dryer connection. So what I ended up doing was I brazed the, the connection where the filter dryer and the fitting reducer met. And I didn't braze where the pipe goes into the fitting reducer. This way, once the connection was solid with the braze, I was able to heat it up and tap the pipe in a little more into the fitting reducer itself and prevent the fitting reducer from going further into the filter dryer. So it is possible that this is a common problem with these York units. You know, it could just be a weak point that they tend to get leaks at. Uh, it could just be an isolated incident with this particular unit as well. I haven't worked on any of the other units. My customer has three units here, uh, identical, and we haven't had issues with any of the other ones yet. So, um, and there are 22 systems, so you're talking probably 12, 13, 14 years old, maybe even older than that. But, you know, it's good to know next time I'm out here, if I ever have another problem with one of the other units, it's a good place to start. I've seen that before where you have an issue with one unit and you see it again on, uh, on the different units that are identical. So it's a good place, a uh, good thing to remember, you guys watching this, you know, that I think it could be helpful to you. So I got the unit all closed up, pulled a good vacuum, charged up to the nameplate rating, and gave it a test run, everything looks good, it's working properly. I actually had another problem before I could get this system back online, the control board was bad. Uh, stay tuned for another video, I'm going to go over what I found with that, since it's a separate topic, I don't want to include it in this one. If you're not already a subscriber, please consider hitting that subscribe button. If you like the videos, give me a thumbs up and hit the notification bell so you don't miss a thing. I got a lot of new content coming. I'm going to be posting content twice a week. So check back for more videos. Um, also follow me on Twitter, underscore Travis Michael. I appreciate the support. I appreciate you guys watching my videos. I'm going to keep bringing them to you. See you in the next one.